scholars, this is Mrs. Day from Trivia of East. I hope everyone is happy and healthy. Today's story or lesson is called The Sword and Stone. Have you ever been swept away by a story? I know I have. There are so many wonderful stories in the world to learn from and treasure. So what is one of your favorite stories? What are you reading right now? Will you tell me in the comments below? Sometimes stories come to us by way of myths and legends from a long time ago. And one of the famous legends of all time is the story of King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. These stories take place in medieval England during the times of knights and castles and fair maidens and noble lords and peasants. What a time of wonder and invention to wrap our imaginations around. You have probably heard of some of the stories of King Arthur before. But have you ever noticed that the best stories are the kind that you hear over and over and over again, but they never feel old? Today, I will share the tale of how Arthur removed the famous sword and stone and took his place as the rightful king of England. The Sword and Stone. In the days of old, Britain was ruled by King Uther Pendragon. The dragon was the emblem, and he was a mighty warrior and a great ruler. He was not the only greatest man. He was not only the greatest man in battle, but he was wise, for he followed the counsel of Marilyn. He, Marilyn was a great magician and a seer. Marilyn could cast spells and change shapes to look like animals or another person. He was called a seer because he could see the future for everyone. That is, except for himself. Hmm, sad. Arthur Pendragon had a son named Arthur. And one day, when Arthur was still young, Marilyn had a terrifying dream. He foresaw that Arthur Pendragon would soon die from a plague that was sweeping the land. And he saw that because Arthur was only a baby. Many of the old, other noblemen would try to take his place as king. Some might even try to harm him and war would break out. So Marilyn secretly gave Arthur into the care of a noble knight, Sir Ector, who did not know he was protecting the king's son and heir. So Sir Ector raised Arthur along with his own son, Kay. Just as Marilyn had predicted, Arthur Pendragon died and the British lords began to feud with each other over who should be king. For years, Britain was torn with warfare and strife. Hmm. And when Marilyn felt that the time had come, he went to the Archbishop of Canterbury and he said that if the Archbishop would call the Lords of the Land to London at Christmas, a miracle would reveal who was the rightful king of Britain. The Archbishop did as Marilyn asked. On Christmas Day, all the lords attended church. When they came out, they found in the churchyard a square marble stone. In the middle of it was an anvil, and into the anvil was thrust a sword. The stone gripped the naked sword by the point, and on the blade was written in gold letters, Whosoever pulls out this sword from this stone and anvil is the true born king of Britain. Each lord tried to pull the sword out, but each one failed. News of the sword and the stone spread with an invitation to all the knights in the land to come and try to pull out the sword. A jousting tournament was announced for New Year's Day. The knights would first compete on the jousting field. Then they would attempt to remove the sword. All the great lords attended a church service on New Year's Day. Among them were Sir Ector and his son, Sir Kay, who had only recently been a knight. Arthur was only 15 years old and completely unaware of his kingly birth. And he acted as Kay's assistant or square, squire. So after the church service, all rode in a merry company to the jostling field. When Sir Kay realized he had left his sword behind, he asked Arthur to ride back and get it for him. 
So Arthur rode as fast as he could to their lodging, but he found the door locked. Arthur had seen the sword of the stone, but he did not know of the legend surrounding it. He said to himself, I will ride to the churchyard and I'll take the sword of the stone, for my brother shall not be without a sword this day. Arthur was alone at the churchyard, for everyone else was at the jostling tournament. So he grasped the sword by the hilt and he gave it a light, quick <clears throat> pull. Out it came. So Arthur jumped onto his horse and he rode to the jostling field and he gave Kay the sword. Now, being a knight, Kay had been told the meaning of the sword and the stone. He recognized at once what it meant to see Arthur grasping the sword before him. Unwisely, he tried to deceive his father. He said, sir, look, here's the sword of the stone, so I must be king of this land. Sir Ector was amazed. He took Kay and Arthur back to the churchyard and he asked Kay to swear how he came by the sword. Frightened, Kay now admitted, Sir, my brother Arthur, he brought it to me. Then Kay and his father looked at young Arthur. Sir Ector remembered how Marilyn had brought Arthur to him in secret many years ago. Marilyn had told him he was to bring the boy up as his own son. And in time, he would learn who the child truly was. How did you get the sword, Sir Ector asked Arthur. Arthur told him exactly what he had done. Now, said Sir Ector to Arthur, you must be the king of this land. I, said Arthur, astonished, how can that be? No man could have pulled out the sword unless he was the rightful king of this land, said Sir Ector. Now let me see whether you can pull the sword back out as it was and pull it out, put it back as it was and pull it back out again. Arthur said, that's quite easy. There in the frosty churchyard stood the white stone with the anvil, but no sword was in the anvil. So Arthur thrust the sword back into the anvil, which he held the blade snugly to see that there was no trick. So Sir Ector tried to pull it out, <coughs> but he could not move it at all. Now you try, he said to Sir Kay, who pulled it with all his might, <coughs> but he could not move it. Now you, Sir Ector said to Arthur, very well, said Arthur, and he pulled it out easily. Sir Ector and Sir Kay, they knelt down before Arthur. My own dear father and brother, cried the boy nervously. Why do you kneel before me? Then Sir Ector told Arthur that he was not really his son and that Merlin had brought him as a baby to be raised in his household. Sir said, Sir Ector, I will ask no more of you, but that you make my son, your foster brother, Sir Kay, steward in charge of your lands. That shall be done, answered Arthur, and no other man shall have the office while he and I live. The three men went to the archbishop to tell what happened. So Arthur took the sword in both hands and he laid it on the altar where the archbishop was standing. Then he knelt down and the grandest knight present stepped forward to make Arthur a knight. The archbishop set the crown of Britain on Arthur's head, and Arthur swore to treat all high and low with justice all the days of his life. The people they threw up their caps and shouted, Hooray! 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 At last, the true king had come to punish. She's come to punish the wicked and to defend the poor. Hooray! Hooray! King Arthur became a legend throughout England and the world. And people like us, we still think about him today. And we wonder what it must have been like to be the boy who pulled the sword from the stone and became king. I want to challenge your imagination.
using only the things you can find in your house and backyard and with your parents and guardians permission of course fashion your own sword in the stone and send me a picture what will you use for a stone well that is all for today i hope you enjoyed the story this is mrs daly from trivium east and i hope you have a happy a healthy and a safe week